Hi everyone and welcome back to a new Intermediate Spring Boot tutorial. In this episode, we are going to explore how to deploy a Spring Boot application as a Windows service. Now, by nature, Spring Boot applications are very flexible. We can deploy them, you know, uh, under a container such as Tomcat or Getty. We can execute them using the Java JAR command and we can install them as an operating system service such as a you know, Linux service or a Windows service. Uh, the Windows service part is a little bit more tricky. But by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to take any standard Spring Boot application and run it as a Windows service. That being said, let's get started. We'll create a very basic Spring Boot application. Now, I want to emulate a long running process. So I'm going to build a simple app that will display the current time at a five second interval. So I went up to Spring Initializer and got myself a fresh skeleton. So nothing fancy, uh, default Spring Initializer, Spring Boot application. And now what I want to do here is I want to print um, the current date. So I'm going to make a method. Uh, let's call it print date. Okay. And this method will write to the console the current date. So we're going to say main encoder time service. And now we're going to create a new Gregorian calendar and get time, I think. Yeah. And we're going to mark this method as scheduled because we want to run it, you know, at a certain interval. And we have a fixed rate for our scheduler, which is going to be 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds. Now, in order for this to work, we also need to add a new annotation in our um, main class, which is called enable scheduling. And this is our basic app. So we have a standard Spring Boot application with scheduling enabled. And this method will execute at a five second interval and will print this message to the console. We'll have um, the latest time printed every five seconds. Okay, uh, let's check that this application works here before we deploy it as a Windows service. So I'm going to start it and see what we have. Okay, and you can see that we have these log messages here where we have the current time. Okay, so my app is running and before I publish it, I want to change two things in the pom.xml file. So first of all, uh, here um, in the Spring Boot Maven plugin, uh, I want to add a configuration tag and I want to mark this application as executable. Okay, this is the first change that I want to make. The second one, uh, inside build, I want to give this application a final name because, uh, okay, this is an optional step, but for example, if I package my app, then it will get called uh, time service uh, 1.0.jar and I want to eliminate this uh, discrepancy. So I'll call my application Romanian coder time service and that's it. Okay, and now if I go to the Maven tab, Maven projects, okay, and I package my app, I should get uh, an executable Spring Boot application called RC time service dot jar. Okay, and everything seems to be okay. Now I navigate here and target and there we have it. We have our executable jar file that is ready to be installed as a Windows service. Now that we have our jar file, we can start to think about the deployment. And I'm going to create a new folder here where we'll host our service. I'm going to call it, um, sorry, I'll give it remain encoder time service okay so I have a new drive you know I created a new folder and here I'm going to copy 
our jar file okay but uh, this is not enough uh, because if you want to install an application as a windows service uh, we kind of need more than that we kind of need to wrap our application somehow and get the basic service functionalities such as you know uh, a command to start the service a command to stop the service um, a command to let the service know how it should start should, should it start automatically when the system when the operating system starts should it start with a delay where should it write you know the standard output the standard error and so on and so forth so just um, because we have a jar file this is not enough to deploy it as a windows service so we need some kind of a wrapper and luckily for us there's a pretty cool wrapper called winsv and you can find winsv on github this is the link and this is a wrapper executable that can be used to host any kind of executable as a windows service so uh, java included okay and it has tons of documentation it's pretty easy to use uh, I've done this in, uh, in production apps and it works quite well uh, the only thing that you need to have is uh, you need to have the .NET Framework 4.0 installed because you want to use the latest versions of WinSV okay so having said that uh, I want to download this wrapper this is the latest version as of today so I'll download um winsv for dotnet 4 because this, this is the latest one and i will also download um you know um a sample configuration just to you know get things started and not have to write it from scratch okay uh we've downloaded this and now i can uh go to downloads um i can take this copy them in the same folder okay so now we have a Romanian coder time service we have our jar we have the um, Windows service wrapper that we just downloaded and we have uh, the XML configuration the first thing that we need to do is we need to change the name of the config file so by default uh, this name should be the same as the executable so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to change the name and this way when we fire up this executable it will automatically pick up the configuration now that we have this in place we can actually edit the config file okay so it's a pretty long just let's get okay uh, and I'm going to delete a lot of these things and we don't need them anymore so as you can see it's a very very light configuration file and we have some standard tags in here now id this is going to be the id of the service so i'm going to call it rc time service uh, the name is the name of the service that will get displayed in the local services app in windows so i'm going to call it romanian corner time service powered by windows v okay uh, this is the description um, so let's give it something spring boot application running as windows service okay and now uh, we have the executable or the program that you want to wrap as a service now in our case uh, we don't have an exe file what we do have is uh, java because you know uh, sorry we have a jar file and the way we execute jar files is by you know typing this command we have java jar and you know some file that jar so in our case the executable is java it's not the name of the jar file okay and once we have the executable we can also give it some arguments and inside the arguments we have well uh, let, let me just paste this so we have java and now we have jar uh, base actually refers to the folder in which uh, this executable uh, lives in so in our case it's going to be this folder that we just created and now we just have to we just have to give him the name of the path we have romanian color time service dot jar 
okay so by making this kind of configuration we're going to have a service we're going to identify it using this name in the local services application and we're going to execute java and then we have you know the standard command jar and the path to our jar file okay so we have jar file wrapper and wrapper config now let's try to install a service to install the service we need to open a powershell or command prompt as admin okay so i'm going to search the command prompt run as administrator because you want to install a local windows service and we need admin rights to do that okay i'll click yes and now i have to go to the d drive i sure hope okay it's like this um cls and now i'll go to the folder that we just created rc time service and uh in here we have the jar the executable and the xml and to install our spring boot service we need to execute the winsv.net 4.exe and we have to pass in the install argument we hit enter and if everything is okay uh, we get a prompt here installing the service with ID RC time service and we also see that we have a new log file from the WinSV wrapper and if we read this log file um, we see that our service has been installed successfully okay what this means is uh, I should be able to find it in local services so I go to local services and uh, we have this RC time service powered by WinSV okay so our service was installed and that means we can now actually start it so I'll click start you know our uh, service is running and if we go back to our folder we kind of see uh, some more log files being created and like I said before this wrapper actually redirects the standard output or the standard error output to some log files because uh, other ways uh, there would be no way to actually see them and we see that we have a winsv out log okay and if we open it uh, we can actually check that our service is running because you know we see the messages that were printed okay and this is uh, the error log so should any error happen um, any stack trace or any uh, anything that was written to the um, error pipe would appear in here so it's a pretty cool way to actually verify that our service is working and we have all the log files that we need to do just that now we just leave, we just need to leave this folder as is and okay this service is going to run in the background of course if you want to stop it you know you can stop it either by um, the local services application or you know by using command prompt okay so I just stop my service and if I go here to the wrapper log we can see here that you know uh, our service was terminated and I think that's pretty much it so with this approach you can take any Spring Boot application and install it as a Windows service as you've seen um, it's not that complicated it will only take you a couple of minutes so you can give it a try and see how it works for you uh, that being said uh, thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed it please hit the like button and share it with your friends if you want to get um, more Romanian coder tutorials or want to um, uh, stay uh, up to date with my latest articles or my latest uh, view tutorials you can follow me on Twitter at Romanian Coder and you can also check out my blog page www.romaniancoder.com until next time have a great day and write amazing code goodbye